Oh, it's already recording? Of course. Who's this guy? What's going on today? Uh, well, Fred's back from the third world country and we have to replace this uh, engine. Don't even ask. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a lot of diarrhea, a lot of vomit. That you said don't, don't ask and then you explain? That's, that's a great well, opening. They, don't, they need to at least know kind of what's going on. All right, yeah, that's, that's the gist of it. You don't need to know any more than Not that. Not myself, but yeah. All right, anyways. <laughs> Back to taking this thing out. Yeah, uh, so uh, we got another busted ass Subaru Forester here. Remember the last time with the what happened? And they put it in sixth, uh, or they put it in reverse, reverse while going on uh, going like sixty miles an hour. Yeah, we did the transmission in that. Yeah, and we showed you guys how to take the uh, transmission out without dropping all the, the extra stuff. Uh, check the, we'll link it if you care. <laughs> but. Uh, this one needs an engine because these cars are, they're great, right? We're learning this over time that these cars are just so well made. And that's why everyone talks about how great Subaru reliability is mm -hmm. and how they're the best cars ever and whatever. So uh, this one needs an engine. They just, uh, I mean, supposedly they ran good oil in it in its whole life. And I mean, maybe, I don't oh, know. He, uh, right? so He's, it was but, mobile one that they ran for a long time. That's that's what he tried. I don't know if it was like, oh, the engine's running bad and now we should take care of it, or if that's what it was from the beginning. It's burning a lot of oil. Enough to throw a code for a, a cat, which they came here saying that they've already replaced the cat. They've already replaced the O2 sensors. They've already replaced whatever else you can think of that isn't an engine. And then, um, you know, we were like, oh, okay, well, what else about it? Well, it burns oil. I'm like, what? That's literally like that'll throw a cat code every day. Um, and then we checked the compression because Fred had a hunch. Yeah, compression was bad. Like 100 PSI per cylinder is supposed to be around 150, 170. One, yeah, 152 is the lowest it should be. So uh, we're changing the engine out. We're going to show you guys what that entails. Mostly. So intake's off. Now we're gonna start disconnecting the, uh, we're gonna take the belt off because we're gonna actually take the AC compressor and hang it to the side. We're gonna take the uh, power steering pulley or pump and do the same. And then other little hoses that we gotta take off, we're going to uh, essentially, the goal whenever we take an engine out is to leave enough of the, or most of the big stuff together. like. Um, where'd you put the air box? Yeah, like you can see we took the air box out as one entire piece because we can and Why make it harder? So what he's trying to say is we're gonna set a timer right now and we're gonna do um, Not what the normal YouTube people do and just skip over everything and then just be like look how fast that was It only took five minutes because the video was five minutes. So right now it's 907 you see that we got some glare. Let's fix <laughs> this for him. Whatever. It's 9.07. It's 9.0 black screen. It, it, uh, it's overhead now. There we go. Uh, whatever. It's 9.07. We're going to uh, see how long it takes us to get this engine out so you guys maybe have a better idea of how long it'll take you. Let's also try to um, put sockets back Okay. where they go as we go along so that I'm okay with trying to be organized today. This doesn't turn into a giant pile of tools. Can it organize giant pile of tools? Whoops. God, can we look right Don't film that. This fast? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> it never happened. Why are we breaking stuff so soon? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah. You gotta get the blood flowing to be able to work on cards, you know. Just can't be chilly. Over here? Over there. Oh. Oh, that one just has a little bitch ass clamp. Wow, 
Why am I gonna put this long ass bolt in the back? I said it before and I'll say it again, you better bag your shit or you're gonna lose it. Interruption number one. We have a customer that came here who wants to talk to me about doing a cold air intake on his. You're not gonna get it obviously, um, but I don't know if he has the money. So we'll see how long this interruption lasts. Although, Look at that. I've never seen, that's a snail shell. The pack rats were hungry on that one. All right, five minutes to tell them to get a coupler, a tube, and a filter. You're gonna pop all these clips. These gotta come off. I don't either. All right, so what we're doing is uh, we're going to actually drop the engine and transmission together so that we can separate it and then stick them together without it being in the car. Um, and so Fred's taking the steering column off and it's got one bolt at the bottom and one bolt at the top of the little joint, which uh, we always loosen both because one slides and the other one comes off. And you mark the one that comes off because at least when you get an alignment, it's close, not really far away from where it should be. <laughs> ah. Ow. Have this engine out in 10 more minutes. What is that? Oh. Yeah, I uh, am checking the balance on these giant ass things. Okay, I'm just noticing that we have to take off the power steering lines. Yep. I think we're ready to drop it. Ten thirty. So. <laughs> All right. Not too bad for an hour and a half. How's the hoof doing? All right, uh, interruption number, I don't know where we're at right now, three. So this person was not paying attention and uh, ran over some rocks. I'll say, um, yeah, core support smashed. I don't know if that happened, it is rusty, but it's surface rust, so depends on when it, all this happened. Obviously inner fender torn away, uh, but core support is, uh, smashed into the AC line and the radiator fan 
is smashed into the oil cooler lines. And the uh, condenser and radiator are obviously bent. But uh, she just wants us to put the plastic parts back on. No. Just more, more shit. I wonder... Well, whatever it was didn't make it this far back, it looks like. But, good thing. Well, oil pan's okay, from what I can tell. Surprising. Yeah. I don't, this might be from something else. I don't know. Because it's supposed to have a... under. Oh, my God. Can you see this? Yeah, now I can. So, that's a subframe bolt that is bent. And it looks like the base is probably bent three quarters of an inch away, three quarters of an inch away from uh, where it's supposed to be. Yeah, here's one on this side that you can see that's, that's what it should look like. Oops. So uh, Fred's going to look and he hasn't uh, oh. told him anything. Ball. Oh, gee. The radiator support? And then? I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Well, I mean, this is scraped, but is this bent? Well, yeah, that that's could, not that, that bad. Bent, yeah. that, is that supposed to sweep as far back as it goes? I think that's bent. Uh-huh. You want to know what else? Huh. Ooh. Oh, shit. <laughs> so you know what that tells me? Shit. That tells me this axle bent back. Bent back. Because this is all bushings. If this is bent, that axle went that far back. It needs a subframe. It needs lower control it does, it, arms. It needs a knuckle. It wrong. needs a strut. It needs a bolt for the frame. How are we going to straighten that bolt out? How are we going to replace that bolt? The torch. I mean, uh, replacing it, I don't know, but being bent it back. Because no. it's got that shank on the end of it, so you can okay. grab it and heat it up. and. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then uh, in terms of it this lasting, this is all messed no, up. Um, it's obviously got scra scratched here, but yeah, subframe, crash bar, um, the radiator fan is into the. Uh, oh shit! Yeah. Yeah, so I was like, I don't know what kind of decorative rock this was, but it was not a rock. You want me um, to talk to this lady? You can, but dude, like, oh. look at this. She blew the axle out on this side too. Not surprising. But yeah, the uh, coolant hose is rubbing on the fan. The AC line is rubbing on the fan. Oh, let's let you talk here. <laughs> well, that that uh, gravel that we saw. On the oh, yeah, yeah. Way, it's also back here on the suffering. Oh, God. Did she bury it? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Wow. What did she Did she have to? I think she might have backed over everything. Like yeah. driven on and then back. I don't know. How is it getting there? Oh my God. I would tell her there is also a chance that with the extent of the damage to the subframe and stuff that even after an alignment, it might still never drive straight. Yeah. It might need to go on the frame machine. Um, obviously the front bumper, um, subframe and lower control arm. Oh yeah. More interesting stuff. I don't know what that's for. Was this able to come off without breaking? The plastic pieces? No, this on the other side, this. No, those all broke. Let me see what other little things we need for the new engine to take off of this one. And then it's gonna be the torque converter bolts. And then we should be able to separate it. I vote we just get that engine over here and we swap all the, yeah. Okay. And then let's swap all this upper stuff onto the other one. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll lift this one up, take the exhaust off, and then we'll lift that one up and put the exhaust on. Okay. Oh, 
thought I had room. We didn't have access to the forklift. Just use the same size hose for both of them. Just get a chunky universal and just... Yeah, this one's way too brittle. For... So now I'm doing the torque converter bolts because we don't want to have that still bolted up when we take this thing apart. And then we had to get a few hoses because they were old and brittle and falling apart. I'll double check, but after this, I think we're moving on to taking the engine off the tranny and then getting that one swapped over. So there's gonna be a final check of us going around making sure that we have all the sensors. Like, I think I gotta put that one over on the other one and whatnot. Um, and then we have our new stuff, a few gaskets, water pump, thermostat, things like that uh, to put on that engine. You see that's the orange stick. So is that transmission gonna fall? Might go down a bit. Down? I think it's stuck on the dowel. It is. I just I said I was getting the dowel. Oh well, you're being a punk bitch is what mm -hmm. you're doing. The dowel's coming out of the end. I can't pry it. My this is turning into one of those lesser of two evil situations where you kind of just need to do the extra couple minutes of work. Yeah. Let's just pick them up. <laughs> oh, it came out of the transmission? It was already out of the transmission. Yeah, but they didn't want to go the last little bit. Yeah, once it was out. Jesus. It just fell out. Hold on, I only got one hand on this. Is it? Okay. Um, I don't really have a good hold right here. Okay. One, two. They seem okay, so no reason to make them worse. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to You want to just start putting it on? That one. We had a lot of interruptions today and tomorrow is uh, more. Um, we already know this because we have two cars, one car that got dropped off today, or no, two cars got towed here today, one got dropped off. We have to check out the two that got towed here, the one that got dropped off is for next week. It's four o'clock. We have the engine ready to go back on the subframe. We'll probably set it on there for tonight. And then tomorrow morning, we'll come back in and put it in. And hopefully in the morning, it should be good. Um, if we didn't have a, as many interruptions, we probably would have finished this today, but that is life. Day two, day one had some setbacks, but we're both here now. And hopefully that's enough to uh, get this thing done today. Hopefully. Yeah, we'll see but we've got the engine and the transmission all made it. It's all on the subframe. Uh, we got to tighten the motor mount bolts, don't forget. And then we're gonna put the wire harness and the intake manifold on. We've got a couple little hoses and sensors and stuff to button up and it's ready to uh, back in. Yeah, 
All right. Okay, hold on. Before we got in here, and one reason why it took us longer, let, let alone, I mean, we have three renters right now. Steve's been busy. We haven't been filming shit. It's kind of hectic here, but um, uh, we had to change the valve covers to the valve covers that came off the old engine because this car is a 12, the engine's a 13. They're pretty much the same, but the coil packs are different. So the valve covers are different. So we had to swap those over. Um, there's also no uh, breather hose that goes from one head to the other head. Um, I'm guessing it's an update thing. I don't know, there's no sensors there. Um, but yeah, so now it's in. Um, we have a few Dyag cars. I'm gonna try to figure out one of them real quick while Fred's piecing this together. Um, I'm probably just gonna pull it up behind uh, the lady we have in Bay 2. Uh, so yeah, this sh hopefully should be done a little after lunch. That's my Brandon's guess. way of saying, I'm not gonna do anything else on this and I'm gonna make Fred finish it. Yep. Well, it's been about 15 minutes of me looking at the Hyundai outside, and uh, I checked the code. I went in, found a code, found a TSB, which is a technical service bulletin. Oh my bulletin. god. And um, <laughs> first, first question in the TSB is, is there lower end damage to the block? I said no. I went to the next one. Is there oil in the engine? I checked. There's oil. Slightly over full, but there's oil. Next thing is, does crank turn? No, it does not. This sucks. Because <laughs> they're on a trip. Oh, is it, so it's part of that, re, not recall, but the TSB thing with the, the knock sensor sub harness thing? Yeah. Oh my God, that sucks. Yeah. So uh, they, have a, uh, <laughs> they have a seized engine, so. Get a no rental way. car. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. It seized on them while they were driving through town. So it's like the uh, other one that you had, like the... It was the, well, that one actually threw a rod out the bottom of it. But yes, it's the same Hyundai thing. So there's a range if you're going to purchase a Hyundai. I don't know the years, but look up whatever Hyundai you're going to, Kia, whatever you're going to purchase, and just type in issues or TSB and it'll come up with stuff and it'll tell you. And there's literally like, I think it's like a six year range through many different engine sizes that they just blow up. Well, I, I think we get about one of those in here every two months. Yeah. That has that issue. Yeah. The Santa yeah. Fe. The Tucson. The Tucson. Son uh, Sonata. Yeah. Um, it's pretty much, I think it's any of the ones that have a four cylinder have a possibility of this happening. Yeah, fun. If you have one, trade it in. Yeah, give it to Car CarMax or whoever fucking yeah. will give you money for it. We heard you and Fred was trying to guess who it was and I saw you drive by and I was like, nope, that was a super sexy 944. <laughs> push apart as you twist them. Yeah, they're almost like a most right? mm -hmm.
fire in the hole. Get some fuel. Turn. Now there's power steering fluid in it. Any lights? No. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. It sounds like it revs easier than it did before. Well, you got a clip of it running, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it runs. You guys heard it. It sounds good. Had a little bit of chatter, you know, had to get some oil running through things, but it sounds good now. Revs nice. So I'm going to go ahead and throw the, uh, the disc brakes here together so I can take it for a drive. Uh, all in all, everything went smooth. It took a lot longer than we thought it would. Uh, you know, whatever, day and a half, day yeah. and a half. Yeah, day and a half, which terrible time for mechanics, but, um, you know, we got a million other things going on here. Anyway, only thing I'd say that I would change different, you guys are gonna do it this way, is I would probably disconnect the struts here uh, as opposed to taking them off on the top hats. Um, that was just a little cumbersome, like putting it all back together like that. But aside from that, I think everything pretty much went the way that we were hoping it would go. Aside from the fact that the 2013 and 2012 had like almost every single sensor on the engine and a bunch of the brackets were completely different. So we had to spend extra time swapping all that stuff over too, which, yeah. Anyway, now you know how to steal a catalytic converter on a 2012 uh, Subaru Forester. Thank you.